Today we're going to expand on our MKS Gen L mainboard conversion by adding a touch screen with SD card and you won't believe how easy it is. Around Christmas time I made a guide on how to fit one of these, an MKS Gen L, to an Ender 3. At that stage I was retaining the factory LCD screen and I had lost SD card support. Well today we're going to fix both of those and it's quite straightforward. In this video I'm testing the TFT28. There is a 32 version that's a little bit bigger. The 28 goes for between 30 to 40 US dollars. It works how you would expect. There's a main menu with lots of different options. You can click through and control various things to do with the printer. It doesn't have some of the specific options from the main Marlin LCD panels, but there is an option to make your own custom buttons as well. So we know what the product is, let's see how easy it is to get it installed. Let's have a closer look at this thing. On the back we have an SD card, we have a 32-bit ARM processor, we have expansion ports, a connector to connect it to your mainboard, we have a power selector, Wi-Fi expansion, a power connector and a reset button. If we were running a ramps, we'd need to put it on 12 volt and connect an external power supply, but with the MKS Gen L, we can leave it on 5 volts, plug it in, and we're good to go. The only other prep is to wash the speaker before removing the seal. The TFT28 will come with an 8 pin ribbon cable, simply connect it to the two ports as shown here. Now, the Ender 3, Ender 5, Original CR10 all have RepRap Smart Full Graphics LCD displays, and that means that this part is a direct replacement. We simply unscrew the four bolts on the back, put the new one into place, and do them up. After you do this and flip it over, you'll see that the screen is almost an exact match, although we do have these gaps down the sides. Not to worry, I've designed a little bevel part that you can 3D print beforehand, and that slots into place between the factory sheet metal mounting bracket and the TFT28. And after you turn it over, you should find that that little gap is gone and it looks much, much tidier. The link for this file is in the description. I hear you asking, what about firmware changes? And the surprising thing is that it doesn't require any. This thing acts more like a Raspberry Pi, connecting via serial and sending commands to control the printer. In fact, here's some footage of it running my Ender 3 with the factory LCD still connected. Don't worry, you can still use Octoprint the way that you used to. Now there doesn't need to be any changes to the Marlin firmware, but there is a little bit of firmware to be configured with a simple text file, so let me take you through that. Linked in the description are a bunch of useful resources. If you go to their GitHub and download the key files, I would recommend making a folder where you store all of them. As well as the actual firmware for the TFT28, there's mounting bracket options and a pretty comprehensive user guide. Although it has some broken English, you'll find instructions and pictures for most of the functions. Now to configure our firmware, and we need five different ingredients, although only four if you're not running a Wi-Fi module. The first one we need is our MKS underscore config text file, and that's in the config file folder. For the display icons, we actually have three options, blue, red, and my favorite, the Windows style. Once again, there's a subfolder for this. If you go into the images folder, you'll see folders for the three options, and inside that is MKS underscore pick. Number three is just as easy, and it's the MKS font directory. Finally, our firmware, and we have three styles. I like retro because it displays the temperature at all times. There's a firmware folder, and inside that, we can see what we saw in the manual, classic, retro, and simple, and there's a bin file inside that, and you simply choose the one you want. You can mix and match as much as you like, but by far the easiest way to do this is to go into the examples folder, where there's an example of the three styles. I would highly recommend not touching these and instead making an empty folder in the same directory and then copying the contents of one of those other folders and modifying that instead. Here I copy and paste in everything except the actual firmware binary and that's because I want the retro style. I therefore take that binary from the correct folder and I put it with all the others. After copying and pasting this fourth file into position I have everything I need because remember at this stage I'm not using the Wi-Fi module. Time to open our configuration text file. This is fairly well documented and we're going to start by setting our firmware type to Marlin and making sure we have normal selected unless of course we have a delta. Now this next one is the most important. You need to change your board rate to 3 because it's 115200 on most printers. I leave language changes off and I make sure I have English selected as option number 3. I make sure only one extruder is selected and then apart from that I lower the max bed temperature from 150 to 110. There are a bunch of advanced options for power resume as well as filament runout detection without altering the firmware. I haven't played with those at this stage. I'm running a BL touch, so I change it from 0 for manual to 1 for auto, and that will change the option presented on the touchscreen. G 
G28 then G29 is the right sequence for a BL touch. We're not touching the Wi-Fi so we can scroll past that for now but we would set it up here. After this we get to the custom buttons and I'm going to return to this later in the video. You can change a number of different things to do with the background color, fonts, etc. But by far the most important one is going to the very end and changing the value to a 1 so the LCD will display error messages from the firmware. After this we can save the file and then we're going to copy our four files and put them on an SD card ready to insert into the TFT28. That's all of our TFT28 firmware configuration done. Hopefully you found that pretty straightforward. We can insert the SD card with our files on it and then reset the LCD. After it boots, you will find an updating screen that comes up and it lasts about one to two minutes before it goes through all of the different files. After that, it will turn on for real and you should see your updates on the screen with whatever configuration that you've chosen. Inspecting the contents of the SD card reveals that the files have been altered and it's up to you whether you retain them or delete them. It works either way. That should be everything you need to get this working. If you're finding you're having troubles where it doesn't seem to be connecting, I guarantee you it'll be the board rate. So revisit that. I don't know about you, but I don't really like that boot screen. So the next thing we're gonna look at is how to customize that image. The manual will tell you the length and width of the image you need to change your boot screen. So I made this one up in Photoshop. After that, we come into the image editor software, go to tools, convert image, and load up your bitmap. Make sure you change it from icon to logo and then click on the cog button in the middle and then click save. Your splash screen has now been converted into the necessary binary file. So what we need to do is to go in our folder that we pre-prepared and paste it in. If this message doesn't come up saying that it's replacing it, then you've done something wrong because it needs to have the exact same name. Put the files on the SD card, complete the update. And now when your printer turns on, you'll see your custom screen. Pretty simple, right? But what about adding custom buttons to run your own G code and M code? Well, that's got a few more steps, but it's not really any harder. I'll take you through it. Back in the bundled image converter software, you can select on the left your folder and all of the images will come up that make up the buttons. On the top right here, you can see custom buttons one through seven, and that's what we're gonna modify and overwrite. If you wanna use any of the existing icons, right click, copy image, and then paste that into Photoshop, and you'll have a base to work with. I did this to get the heated bed icon and then I added my own text to make buttons for heating up the extruder and hotbed. After saving all of my bitmaps, I converted them all into binary, selecting icon from the drop down menu. Now let's revisit that configuration text file and come down to the function customization sections. I wanted seven more buttons, so I set that value to seven. And then you can see here, I just entered the G code for my different temperature commands. The first four changed the nozzle temperature, 215, 240, 260 and off. And then the last three change the hotbed temperature, 60, 100 and off. If you're wondering about the command setting buttons below, they're the ones that you can access mid print. I took my new binary buttons and overwrote the ones in the folder, put everything on an SD card, rebooted, updated, and you can see my custom menu here working perfectly. You should be able to program these buttons to any G code that you want. By fitting this color touchscreen, we're starting to unlock the potential of the MKS Gen L mainboard, but there's still more to come. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to fit 2130 TMC stepper drivers so you can have quiet operation and all of the smart features that you see on a Prusa Mark III. Now you might notice it's a little bit bare behind me and that's because I'm in the process of moving from one room to another for my recording studio. There might be a little bit of a gap before my next video, but expect to see the new set soon. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.